Hello friends. So in the previous video, we have just uh, started our uh, basic introduction to the induction motors and we saw a very uh, basic level of understanding of the construction. Okay, we saw that the induction motor basically has a stator and a rotor. Okay, stator is stationary and the rotor is the rotating part. And in the rotating part, that is the rotor, we are having two types of rotors, right? One is called the squirrel cage and we have seen how it is constructed and then we have seen the slip ring type of uh, construction or wound uh, type of rotor winding okay so that is the wound rotor has the same uh, stator type of winding three phase winding which is present in the rotor okay so today we will be seeing how is the induced torque developed in an induction motor so we'll see two explanations for this one is uh, using the basic lorentz force and other one which which we can use is uh, from the equations that we have derived for the torque induced which connects the uh, rotor flux as well as the stator magnetic field. Okay, so this two explanations we will be seeing today. So for example, let us have a rotor structure here now. Okay, so I am just drawing the rotor structure now. Okay, and uh, for example, the rotor is something like this. Okay, so here you are having some teeth. We have already seen a lot of these things in the DC machines course once. So assume that this is the rotor. Now these rotors will have conductor bars, right? So this is a cross section of the rotor, remember? Okay, so the rotor will actually three dimensionally it will extend to the both sides. We are just taking a cross section of the rotor. So that is why these conductors you are having a uh, this uh, circular type. So this is the cross section of the rotor. Now let us say that you are having, I have not drawn the stator here, but uh, assume that there is a stator also and that stator, now in the stator three phase windings, you are giving three phase electrical power. Therefore, what do you get? You get a rotating magnetic field. Now, let us assume that the rotating magnetic field is something like this. I'm just drawing it like this. So, you get a feel that the rotating magnetic field exists in this space. Okay. And it has a direction like this. Okay. So, the rotating magnetic field has a direction like this. Let us call it as Vs. And it is rotating in the counterclockwise direction at what speed? Synchronous speed. So, this is the omega synchronous. Now you already know the equations that is the synchronous speed in terms of RPM will be equal to 120 F electrical divided by P. So this F electrical is the supply frequency and this is the number of poles that are created. Okay, So NS is equal to 125, uh, 120 into 120 into F electrical divided P and uh, that is uh, this is omega in terms of angular speed and it is rotating in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, So you, these conductors you can see that because this uh, field is changing its position these conductors for example let us take this conductor here it is seeing a changing magnetic field yeah, because it's rotating now, because this sees a changing magnetic field an emf will be induced right see what do you need for emf you either need a spatially changing uh, magnetic field or you need an uh, uh, e flux which is changing with respect to time so in a transformer emf is induced due to changing with respect to time but whereas in generator or a motor as such, uh, the EMF is induced due to the uh, space variation of the flux. Okay, So here, this conductor here, let us call that conductor A. This conductor A sees a changing magnetic field. Okay, So let's bring that conductor here now, just to get a better feel of this. So you are having a field, which is seen like this, this BS. It is rotating here, right, omega sync. Now I already told you, when this conductor is now going to see a changing magnetic field, it will induce an EMF, right? So the EMF induced, okay, is equal to the relative velocity between the stator field and the conductor V cross B, okay, BS, V cross B dot L. So this is the basic equation that we have seen in DC machines, AC machines, etc. Now this is the relative velocity between these two, okay? So now at this point, uh, we can uh, see the relative velocity of the rotor with respect to the stator. Relative velocity of the rotor conductor with respect to the stator. Okay, So I have already explained all these things in AC machinery fundamental. So you can see that in the video rotating magnetic field. So because BS is rotating in this direction and V relative is with respect to BS. So it will appear as the conductor is moving in the opposite direction. right? For example, when you are going in a bus. okay And one person is stationary in the bus stop. Okay? So with res when you are moving forward you see that person moving backward. So same way, when you are keeping the reference as Vs, the conductor and it is moving in the count, uh, counterclockwise direction, in this direction, it will appear as the uh, rotor conductor for the stator flux, it will appear the rotor conductor is moving in the opposite direction, just like the 
you feel when you are traveling in a bus that the person who is standing in the bus stands stationary he is moving away from you so in this case now this rotor is stationary right so this is the v relative velocity okay so now v cross b means take v and cross with b so you have a counter clockwise rotation therefore the emf induced direction will be v cross b okay so this is the counter clockwise so counter clockwise means it is coming out of the page so this emf induced will be out of the page so it will look like this right so we are taking only for one conductor which is conductor a now look you are having a current okay in the conductor in a magnetic field now when you are having a current in a magnetic field you will have a force right and that force is called lorentz force and that force direction is proportional to i cross b right that is proportional to i cross b these are basic dc uh, any machine uh, fundamentals okay so this is like this so i so that's a three dimensional type so this is i right and this is b okay so the force is i cross b the force will be i cross b so this is coming outside uh, coming towards you and this uh, this uh, b is in the up uh, b is in the upward direction right so three dimensionally if i have to draw it will look something like this okay so this is your b okay and this is your i okay so the force will be i cross b so i cross b means take i and cross with b therefore the force will be in either this direction or this direction right cross products are always perpendicular so i cross b it is now in the uh, counter clockwise direction here so the force will be in this direction right so the force is in like this force is like this so this will be the direction of the force which is produced in the motor now if you take this a conductor here there will be another conductor a dash like in this side and that will have a current which is opposite right so this is all can i told you this is all connected using an end ring therefore to complete the connection if this is having a dot this will have a cross okay therefore if this has a force in this direction okay and this will have a force in the opposite direction because the current direction has changed right and the field direction is same so this has an induced force in this direction so what will happen a torque is developed and the motor starts to rotate or the rotor starts to rotate now the interesting thing the, the thing here is that see the rotor the force is like this right so the torque is in this direction so this force you can see one is like this and the other one is like therefore the overall torque is in this counter clockwise direction right so the induced torque is in the counter clockwise direction right so the rotor rotates in the same direction as the same direction as the stator magnetic field so this point is very important so what did we see we saw that there is a magnetic field which is rotating that means that the conductor is going to see a change in magnetic field so when the conductor sees a change in magnetic field it will induce an emf which is give, defined by this equation and that induced emf will produce a current why it is producing a current because the conductors are short circuited right in a spherical cage motor the conductors are shorted down so you have a current path so once you have a current flow you see that in the same magnetic field there is a current carrying conductor and when you have a current carrying conductor in a steady magnetic field it will have a force it will experience a force and we found out that the force is in this direction for one conductor and the direct opposite conductor the force will be in the other direction so every conductor here will experience a force right so one force will be like this another force will be like this like this right so overall you are getting a counter clockwise torque here see overall you are getting a counter clockwise torque therefore the motor starts to accelerate in the same direction as the synchronous speed okay so that means the motor will start to rotate now there is uh, another way to explain all these things so let's now draw proper rotor structure and let us try to explain this with respect to the fields which are created now it's almost the same diagram which i have drawn but i have drawn it a little bit neat here so here you are having the stator magnetic field i have not drawn the stator structure so this is the actually the rotor structure okay so you are having the magnetic field bs which is produced by the stator okay stator magnetic field and it is rotating in the counter clockwise direction with a speed of omega c okay which is Uh, this n s is related on n sync is equal to 120 f electrical divided by p okay so this is the basic thing now you know that the emf will be induced and there will be a uh, rotor current which is going to flow so arbitrary let me take a direction like this okay okay so this is the axis which shows the rotor current maximum okay rotor current maximum this is just to define the rotor magnetic field now i told you when a current is flowing now for example this conductors we will take so for example a current is flowing like this 
so if you see the magnetic field of, of this particular loop here magnetic field so this is coming out and this is going inside right so it is something like this okay so it is coming out from here and it is going inside so in this direction you feel that the magnetic field in space will be in this direction right it will be in this direction so you use the uh, this current is flowing in the counterclockwise direction so the magnetic field will be in this right hand screw rule okay all these things are very well explained in the ac machinery fundamentals you can watch that video also so here also we can just draw that rotor flux okay so this is vs is created by the stator and now br is created by the rotor now you are having two magnetic fields in space right and when you have two magnetic fields in space the induced torque we have seen that is equal to k into br cross bs now these are the equations that an engineer should be interested in rather than this particular explanation which is very basic level we have to concentrate on these particular equation because these are very easy to analyze okay so the to induced torque direction can be found out by crossing br with bs right so you take br and you cross with bs so that direction will give you the induced torque direction right so the so the, what is the direction it is the counterclockwise direction. so induced torque will be in the counterclockwise what is the meaning of induced torque in the counterclockwise direction that means the overall rotor will start rotating in the counterclockwise direction right so this explanation is very useful for this uh, wound motor type okay so i told you in wound rotor type you are having the same type of stator windings okay whatever is stator winding three phase electrical winding same thing you are having in the rotor structure also okay therefore for this those type of explanation this is useful and for squirrel cage this explanation is useful so i have given you both so now how much fast can this uh, rotor move now okay can it go up to synchronous speed okay so we'll see that so what is the limit what is the upper limit here now for example let us theoretically take this rotor is rotating at the synchronous speed okay that means the induced dmf you see it is the relative velocity between the uh, rotor flux as well as the stator flux right rotor and stator so if both are rotating at the same speed what will happen there is no relative speed the relative speed is zero that means there will be no induced dmf and once there is no induced dmf there is no current and if there is no current there is no torque induced because torque is produced due to the current which is flowing right the interaction of the current and the magnetic field that is how torque is made. so if you have no induced dmf there is no current and there will be no torque and the motor will start to slow down okay so what i am trying to say here is that the induction motor can never reach synchronous speed it will try to reach synchronous speed but it will never reach there it is like a running race it is trying to reach synchronous speed but it can never reach there because once it reaches there the emf induced will be zero the current will be zero and the torque will be zero therefore it will try to reach but it will be always little bit less than what it is from synchronous speed okay it can never reach the synchronous speed so that is important thing here so we'll just write if the rotor rotates at the synchronous speed the emf induced will be zero that means the current will be zero that means the torque induced will be equal to zero okay so what happens here is that um, this causes the rotor to decelerate and once it starts to decelerate there will be a relative velocity because the speeds are not same then emf will be induced then the current will be induced then the torque will be induced so therefore it is almost like a running race here okay so what is the conclusion is that the induction motor the induction motor can only rotate at speeds less than the synchronous speed speeds less than the synchronous speed okay but the synchronous motor rotates at the same speed as the synchronous speed because there the working principle is the magnetic locking between the uh, rotor and the stator right magnetic locking between the rotor and the mag uh, rotor magnetic field and the stator magnetic field so that is different principle and here it is just the induced torque which is produced by the rotor okay now in reality we have already seen this working principle of induction motors where have we seen that when i told you about the starting methods of the synchronous motor remember that one of the methods was using amortizer windings right so what was an amortizer winding you have the stator structure like this and then the rotor structure was something like this right and i told you the synchronous motor is not a self starting motor so what did we do we placed some 
conductors here like this which is called amortizer windings and i told you this amortizer winding will bring the rotor to enough speed to get the magnetic locking right so you start the motor okay and the, because of this uh, action what we discussed here the motor will come up to speed and once it comes to speed we turn on the dc supply and this will become a magnet very fast and then there is a magnetic locking between the stator magnetic field and the rotor magnetic field right so that is how the synchronous motor works so in that time i didn't tell you that that was the working principle of the induction motor but see that process is so efficient that you can design an entire motor out of it right so this is the way torque is induced in an induction motor now i have told you that uh, the synchronous uh, the motor can rotate at speeds only less than the synchronous speed okay so this brings a new concept which is called slip okay the difference between the speeds between the synchronous speed and the rotor speed is called slip speed that we will see in the next video okay so i hope you have understood this video i'll see you in the next video thank you now that the video is over please stay with me for 30 more seconds now the vision of this channel is to create a repository of good quality videos with crystal clear explanation regarding various topics related to electrical engineering now if you want to help me spread the word please share this video with anyone interested in these topics the second thing is that for me education is a two way process therefore if you have any doubts or suggestions regarding any of the videos or regarding the channel please put them in the comments below we can have a healthy discussion and that way we can build a strong community of electrical engineers so that's it for today's video so till i see you in the next time it's me varun signing off and have a great day thank you